Christina here, and in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how you can use your scrap material and make all kinds of fun things on your own tech mixer. So let's get started. wondering what can I use my scraps for? There are a variety of different things you can use your scraps for. If you're anything like me, I really just like wasting. I try to use up most of my material, whether it's making small little things or just trying to get the most bang for my buck. Um, one of my favorite things to make, of course, I love doing the small things, would be keychains, earrings, pins, hair clips, all those types of things work great with scrap material. I've also had a lot of success doing small little business packs, which I will be showing in this tutorial as well. It's a great way to use up your scrap material. It's a good way to get in touch with local businesses. I've had some really good success with that. I will kind of be showing you some examples of what I'm talking about. And yeah, I mean, just have fun with it. The files in this video that I will be using purchase from the OwnTech website. They now have a DIY shop where you can download the digital files. So feel free to work along with this video and download the files if you'd like. There's a bunch of different files available, different packs. I'm going to be using some scrap packs in this video. So yeah, check it out. See what you like. There's a lot of awesome stuff there. Now you'll notice on a lot of these scraps, we actually have some spaces. So this is really good. We can actually use some smaller files that you can purchase from the OMTech website. And we can actually place those smaller files within these gaps. I have my file open. I have my fill and line both set correctly. And I have my machine on. I'm going to be starting with the 532 inch maple for this first part of the tutorial and we are going to be engraving and cutting this. I'm going to be holding the material down with these magnets to prevent any movement during the engraving and cutting process as well. Just for visual purpose, I'm going to be starting in this area. Make sure you always check your focal height before starting any job, just in case the material that you had in before is slightly thicker or thinner than the material you have in now. The designs look good. Now we're ready to frame it to make sure that it is going to be engraving and cutting in the correct location that we want it. All right, that looks good. Now we can send the job to the laser. Now hopping on over to the laser, we're going to actually click file. We're going to select the file that we just sent to the machine. And as a precaution, I always recommend framing it just to make sure that it's in the same location that it is when you're using Lightburn. Looking good. looks good but I do think we could still use up a little bit more space so let's jump back on the computer and figure all that out. As a precaution I always recommend making a copy of whatever design elements you're working on just in case you make any changes you can go back and use a file that you did previously. So that's what I'm going to be doing here first. 
then we just repeat the process we did before lining up framing making sure everything is in the area that we want it to go in for when we start engraving and cutting again I'm gonna be swapping materials now to do the 532 walnut. I actually use the walnut when I just want a dark wood finish. No paint, but a lot of people seem to really, really love it. Just gonna be following the same process that we did with the maple. We're going to frame it again and then send. A little tip that I like to use is if you actually poke your finger down on one of the elements, usually it'll stick right to it and you can pop them up. For cleaning wood, I highly recommend rubbing alcohol and a paper towel. Try not to use any type of colored cloths because sometimes that can actually stain and dye the wood, which we don't want when it's specifically light like this one. I'm also going to be using these really cool acrylic paint pens in this tutorial. These are medium tip. I actually got them on Amazon during the, the prime deals that were going on and they're fantastic. I really enjoy using them. They come out clean. There's a lot of different colors. Very impressed and happy with my first try with them. Just some cool effects in case you're following along with my techniques. I really enjoy kind of putting little dots as I'm painting to kind of give it a little bit more depth when I'm adding colors or trying to shade. In this particular design, I'm going to be using a couple different shades of pink to get different highlights and shadows. All of these were actually painted with these paint pens. Some people actually prefer the regular look of wood, which is also fine. It's really up to you how you would like to customize your products. In this next section, I'm actually going to be going over some ideas to help you bring your products to life. <laughs> 